Now, Alex was talking in the last episode about the massive changes that took place in Chinatown uh, from the 60s to the present day. And today, we are sort of going to pivot uh, to the eastern side of Singapore uh, to talk about a similarly dramatic change to the physical, the social uh, skyline and landscape of uh, the east, right? The place that we sort of known generally today as the East Coast. Alex, where was it uh, that you lived uh, in the 1960s in the East? Go back to 1950s, where I first lived in the in the place that's uh, the corner of Steel Road and East Coast Road. I'm talking about 1949, 50, 51. Anyway, <clears throat> that um, that place where I lived, then I shifted to another part of Singapore, Bukit Timah, then came back again to stay in my last session. I mentioned Jalan Bulo Purindo. That's where um, I lived uh, from the from the uh, 60s, mid 60s onwards. Um, the particular the particular fondness I have for that place would be walking along Marine Parade Road. It's not a road, actually, you know, it's a kind of um, a route, a kind of a walkway. And it starts from Katong Convent. Uh, picture yourself, the old Katong Convent, you know, not the not present Katong Convent, which is so, so much of a renovation. Now, that point there, um, there is that walkway stretching all the way until the end of where you could see the mansion, a very large house known as Mandali Villa. And that was the home of Li Chun Guan. Li Chun Guan, very prominent Swiss born Chinese, whose father Li Ching Yan inherited a lot of money to the son Li Chun Guan. So when I start when I was living in that area, I used to take walks, you know, with my grandmother. And we start off with uh, walking towards where I live, towards Katung Convent, meaning you got to go through the road known as Martial Road. Martial Road would take you to Katung Convent, and then you could see there's an, a short little access, you know, to Marine Parade Walkway. So if you turn right from where you start off, and that's the whole stretch of Marine Parade leading to Mandalay Villa. And beyond that, be, you could see the sea. Beautiful sea, you know, lovely sea, except for low tide where it could be a little bit unsightly lah, because of the, the mud, whatever. And if you look towards the right, towards St. Patrick's School, it's all sandy beach. You could walk, you know, you could walk, but there's no walkway, there's no proper route. You just walk along the sand, it can be quite messy. So I start walking from that point and then past the very in those days, you know, it was a very notable landmark, the pillbox waiting for invasion from the Japanese. Now, it was constructed during, just before the war. Could I just, this is the photo you showed me, right? Uh, could I just show it for, yes, for the listeners? Yes, this. That is it, right? Yeah, that's the one. The lady on the right is my mother and the, on, the, on the left is her sister, her elder sister. And this was taken in 1950, I believe, 1950. From this orientation, where is the sea? Be behind her. Behind. And if you look at the photograph on the right, extreme right, there is that spot, the very blank, that, that's the, that's, that's a sea. So this part of, of the, she's walking on the road, right? And this would the be... Pathway. The, pathway. the pathway. The pathway. It's actually small little pebbles, uh, small stones, lah, because mm. I don't think the, the, the pathway was ready at that time, not that I can't uh, uh, remember. Because yes. I started walking there from 1952, 53 onwards, you know, used with my grandmother. Right. Is the pillbox unmanned at the time? No, it's just bare, barren. <laughs> but you could go in, you know, right. I believe. Yeah, you ah. could go in and see. Okay. There, so, there seems to be an entrance there, right? Is that just behind the yes, uh, next two ladies? Yes, next to my auntie. Next yeah. to my auntie, that's the entry. And then to, uh, behind my auntie, the entry, and then you just have to 
uh, uh, turn, turn left and then you get the the door to the chamber. Should I also show the next picture or we yes, wait? Yes, please. Yes, please. Okay. Can you see this one? Oh, right. Oh, that's, that's a very proper view of the sea. And this part of the Marine Parade, uh, just next to the, the pathway, the walkway, uh, the, the, the walkway that was, being, uh, that, that was laid out for pedestrians to walk, is just next to it, adjacent to it. Well, I'm in the, I'm on the, I'm on the right, just behind my, just in front of my mother. And the the other two on my, on my. Is that you? This one? On, uh, the, the, the second one, the second one. The second one. That's you. Uh, that's me, that's me. The first one is my cousin, that's me, then my sister, then my cousin again, then my younger brother. Yeah. And this, yeah. What year would this be roughly? You think? 1950, I would reckon it's 52. 52. 52. That's a long And you time. can see, on a, on a clear day, you could see the ships, you know, the ships um, birthing, not yeah. birthing, you know, what you call... Um, anchored, right? Anchored. anchored what what ships were those? Sea, were this, cargo, uh, mainly cargo boats. Uh, cargo okay. boats. I think the island behind that stretch of, um, you could see the island, that's Batam. That's Batam, you know? Because the Singapore side is on extreme right, where my the my cousin, the first boy, just behind me. At this moment in fifty two, were you already staying in Katong? Oh yes, or? I was in I was in the um, Steel Road. All right, right, okay. So continue, we walked and um, beyond, as I mentioned, um, the 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 sea vastness of the sea it's so it's so beautiful especially if you take a sunday stroll or an evening stroll and watching the sunset because appropriately the sun sets on the west you could the 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 the, the sight is very very nice to watch and the beauty of the sunset the changing colors mm. and that's oh. my grandmother's favorite view was this? As I mean, walk, th this was yes, obviously please. before the day of the East Coast Parkway and all that, right? Um, <laughs> was this ever, ever used as recreational area? Uh, not really, mm. except for um, people to spend the evening, Sunday evening, Sunday afternoon, and especially on Saturday morning, Sunday morning. That's about it. Um, for recreation, in a sense um, of um, Children playing around, yes, yes. But beyond that, um, you don't see any jogging. There wasn't any jogging. The habit or the um, the the jogging exercise and brisk walking or whatever. It is just an evening or morning stroll. No one went to swim in the water. Oh yes, I was about to mention <laughs> that. And the people that swim, they were all family. With children, lots and lots of kids in those days. Mm. You see a parent uh, with what is it, four or five kids, very common, very normal. Um, and the fishermen, the fishermen with their boats, you know, their fishing boats, uh, they would uh, have it laid down for, uh, um, for whatever, for repairs, for cleaning up, or whatever. And then during high tide, when the the, the fishermen, the, the they are, they are very good and they're very they were, they're experts, you know. So they could tell when is the season, the right season to fish in the morning. You could see them carrying the various apparatus, you know, for the fishing gears from wherever they were from, walking towards along Juchet Road into Marine Parade towards their boats. Mm. Were, then, were these Chinese or Malay fishermen? They were all Chinese, but oh. um, if you uh, go beyond, in other words, the other direction towards Siglap, where that's uh, quite an ample Malay village, in, uh, living in atop, atop houses there, you will get the Malay fishermen. That's at Siglap, you know, the Siglap um, uh, village. So as you walk through this walkway, 
and it, you'll be passing by um, roads like um, Ko Chuan, Ko Chuan Avenue. Incidentally, Ko Chuan is the name of Li Kong Chen's father. And which brings to mind, yes, really, that the whole of that area was owned by Li Kong Chen, the Li Kong Chen family, all right, which include the Grand Hotel, uh -huh. the Grand Hotel, which is the other side of Cotton Convent, how shall I say, Cotton Convent in Martyr Road, then um, walking towards Cotton area, you have um, a road called Karikal Road, and then you get St Steel Road, an extension of Steel Road. But it wasn't a proper road, you know, it was just a road, a kind of a cul de sac, a cul de sac leading you to the Grand Hotel. Today, it's known as the Karikal Mahal or Mahal Karikal, belong to, I think, an Indian family. But, 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 to my understanding, it's Lee Kong Chen's uh, property. So, uh, walking along that way, and then I will get Jago Close. And that place, um, I think, the, if I can recall, access is a bit limited, you know. You've got to go through some, some small little points for you to trespass into the road. Then the proper road after that is the chapel road that connects with this marine parade. Chapel road, you know mm. where the Catholic church is? The mm. church known as the, what's the name? Uh, church of Holy Family. Something yeah, that, that's what I wanted to ask you about, right? If you kind of transport yourself and imagine today, right? This uh, seafront, right? Where would it be today? The walkway is still there, but there's a road. Mm. After the road, you get all those HDB blocks, the right. entire stretch. I tell you honestly, the last time I passed through uh, was probably, what is it? Mm. Five years ago, six years ago, seven years ago. I really walked through that. Yeah. So there, there you have it, you know, memories fade because new things take over and the old memories are being buried little by little. Okay, so that's the, um, the Chapel Road. And then there's another road that connects with Marine Parade Road called Sea Avenue. Hardly known, you know, hardly known C Avenue. Because C Avenue leads you to the East Coast Road where today is all the makan shops, you know. Lots and lots of makan shops. And then uh, um, across it, we get the Holy Church, uh, the Holy Family Church. That road there, shop houses, and then you find some more residential houses, homes of residential houses. Uh, one of which I recall was the clinic of Dr. Guyaling. Dr. Guyaling. Guyaling died and then um, it was taken over by a good friend of mine, Dr. Song, I can't remember his full name, who died five years into, into his practice suddenly because he died of cancer. Very old, friend, very nice friend of mine. Okay, going back to... Sorry, uh, chapel... if I can just jump in, right? So you mentioned the Makan places, you mentioned the clinic. What was the community living there? Chinese, majority stress born, hmm. English speaking, thoroughly English speaking, you don't hear dialects. Just about the only dialect would be the Malay dialect spoken by the Peranakan to the uh, to, to some of those the Indian, older Indian who don't under no, in fact they can speak Malay. Uh, uh, they speak Malay even among themselves. Hmm. The Peranakan family, they speak among themselves, the older generation, the older folks, like my grandmother. All right? She well, doesn't well, speak a word of she doesn't speak a word of Hokkien, except for Malay, not English, well smitten. My right. mother, she's trilingual. She speaks uh, English, Malay, and a little bit of Hokkien. Mm. My father is even better. My father speaks Japanese. He speaks uh, Hokkien, Cantonese, Mandarin, English, Malay. That's my father. So, in, in in the example of his, of his, um, uh, of his, the, his benefactor, uh, Dr. Lim Boon King. My father was a student of Dr. Lim Boon King in the days when he was in MO University. All right, that's nice. Yeah. The, uh, so basically, uh, kind of upper class, straight Chinese were living there. W was this uh, estate, private estate? Middle class. Middle class. Did it have a name? No, it's Katong. It's, it's just, just Katong. Katong. Just cut Right. Middle class. The upper class uh, would probably be beyond that towards Wilkinson Road, Tanjong Katong Road. Right? 
that's where my very good friend, uh, Tan Yang Kiam's uh, generation, uh, his grandson stays there. Tan Yang Kiam's son, what's his name? <laughs> anyway, his grandson, King Lik, he stays there. And then uh, Wilkinson wrote that those will be the Paranakan upper, upper class. Mm. So walking again towards from Chapel in, uh, from C Avenue, you're in Katong, you're going back to C Avenue, back to the walkway, you find a very old landmark, a very large building, a very old landmark. And today it's a new building, eh? and that's Tung Ling English School, one of the very old bilingual school, Mandarin and English. I'm not sure whether it's a public school, but in those days, eh, it was quite a well-known school. And that would be the point. That school is located at the corner of Juche. Uh, Juche joining with Marin Parade. And mm. then beyond that, you would, there's a pier, you know, there's a kind of a, correct, there's a pier. And um, 10 years later, you're talking about 1965, 66, 67, a restaurant was located there. I knew because uh, we used to go there for dinners in the 19, in the late 60s. I'm just it's wondering no there, no. We we can try to sort of uh, plot all this on the map. I mean, you've basically brought us along uh, the East Coast, uh, Gautong area. Let's try to see if we can trace your, your footsteps on the map. Right? Give me a minute. All right, so this is the uh, westmost part. Uh, closest oh, to the yet. center not area. I know, I know, yet. I know. But but <laughs> let, let's uh, start where. Uh, is this? Would this? No, this uh, is further. We need to go further, right? Further hold east. Hold on, uh, hold on. Let me let me let me check because I can't see through it. Hold I on. Got to I, I just it. enlarged it. Yeah. So this is still Geylang, right? Oh no, the, no. The Lorongs, right? No, we go. You're going to push more. Yeah, going to push more. Some more. No, no, no. Contrary wise towards um, Siglap, towards Siglap. Okay, here. Yes, Katong Road here. Uh, East Coast Road. Can you Chuchet enlarge it a road. bit? Enlarge uh, it a bit. If I enlarge it further, you'll be blurred. Okay. Yeah. Um, I got Tungling School. I got Tungling School on the right at... Uh, no, no, we, we, where we began. Where we began. Where we first what? began. Yeah. Because we pushed where, a bit more, a bit more. To the left or right? It was Bodok, to the Bodok, to Bodok side. Mm, okay. Yeah. Can you see St. Patrick's? And then can you see on the left a big word, Katong? Yeah. And then can you see Katong Convent? Yeah. And then below Katong Convent, can you see the walkway? And it ended here, there. Here is C Avenue, right? C Avenue. Yeah, that's C Avenue. Right. Put your arrow, put the cursor to Katong Convent. Yeah, and get, okay, that's, stop it. Now, that's the starting point. Can you see it ended there? The line? Yeah. The line ended there. Because if you walk, it's all sandy, you know. It's all sand towards St. Patrick's School. It's hard to walk through, like, because uh, um, it's a lot of bushes and all that. Yeah, right so by the sea, these two schools, right? And yes, next Tong Ling yes. is over here. Correct. All the correct. schools have such great views of the sea. <laughs> Including St. Patrick's. It's a bonus. Is a bonus to students. And Alex, where is your place again? Uh, okay. Steel Road is over here. A steel Road. Um, yeah, come down. Okay, there you, that's where. Can you uh, see Lorong N? Can you see Lorong N? Yes. Yep, that's there. Uh, where? Like here? Uh, that's the one, that's the one. Okay. Yeah. yeah, inside there, inside there, inside there. Okay, right. Okay, so we continue. Push the map from Tung Ling, push the map towards the... Uh, City towards the city slightly, mm. slightly, slightly. Okay, so we are moving closer towards the city, right? Yes. Okay, I mentioned uh, Mandalay Villa. Yes, correct. Then I walk, and then can you see Brook Road? Brook Road. Can you see uh, Duchet Police Station and uh, Roxy Theatre, Roxy Cinema? Uh, New yep. Roxy over here. Yeah, that's the one. Right. The next quadrant. Yeah, the next quadrant. Now, from. If from Juchet, I could come out to go to um, Roxy Cinema, the um, the back of the cinema, or rather, those the, just next to the next to the cinema, the building there, you get um, the hawker store, 
Why do I go there? That's the original Roxy Laksa. Mm. No questions asked. You know, you're talking about 1960s. 50 cents a bowl. Lovely, very nice, tasty, and we can take two bowls successively. Got it? Mm. Yep. And then walking towards the police station, back into um, Brook Road. Today, the Roxy is still there, you know. The, the police station has become, um, I don't know what it is, you know. I'm sorry. All I could see as I passed by to, uh, to, my, to my brother's home, right. I could see uh, shoppers and then um, stalls here and there. That's about it. But today, uh, you have all those uh, buildings, Roxy Square, and then um, there's a hotel there, is it? What, what hotel? I can't remember. It starts with M. And Roxy Square is where our SHS um, registered office is. Mm. And that's where Wendy works in there, our mm. administrator. So that's. I mean, that, what, what really strikes me here is the number of schools, right? I mean, I've. I think there's only. There, I mean, further, you know, to the uh, sort of northwest, you have uh, Daman, yep. Daman yep. Chinese Middle School, Tanjong yep. Katong Secondary Technical yep. School, right? Which was yep. uh, just newly set up at the time. Yeah. Tanjong right. Katong Girls. Girls School. And uh, Hague Boys. Hague Road, Road Boys Schools. School. Correct. Uh, this is, is this an international school, the Fowley School? Uh, no, there is another Chinese school, uh. if I recall. Um, it's uh, it's got the Chinese name. Mm. Well, we could research. Uh, you could research on that when you when you're free. Yeah, um, but, but what what the schools tell us is that uh, you know there was a substantial population here which was quite educated and young as well, right? To have children who are going to the schools. Yes. So this was quite uh, you know a vibrant uh, community and area, wasn't it? Correct. The whole of Katong District, the suburbs. Is the most, um, for want of a better word, progressive. Yeah. Uh, Education-wise, civil servants. Um, well, I mean, you, you, civil servants and the office workers, office the people who work in all the clerical, the cl clerical staff, and a few uh, single bungalow houses that you see or find along Hick Road, mm. Katong Road, Hick Road, and would be where the higher class stays. I mean, Tiam Siu Avenue, you know, um, that's the name of the Wu Tiam Siu, one of the uh, prominent uh, Chinese businessmen. Um, and Stanford College owner, mm. go back to 1950s, 60s, E. Pereira, his house was in Dunman Road. Today it's a condo. I don't know whether you've heard of Stanford uh, College. He, he runs the college, uh, okay. Stanford College, yeah. And that's E. Pereira, I remember. And also the mm -hmm. Chinese uh, swimming club is over here. Uh, Chinese swimming mm -hmm. club would be just after Mandalay Villa. Mm. I mentioned Mandalay Villa. Now, let me point out Mandalay Villa. Can you see... Ch oh, yeah, you have got a Chinese swimming club there. Yeah. Okay, put your cursor there. Chinese swimming club, put your yep. cursor there. Yeah. Now, can you shift, go up, slightly up, and then you see Ember Road? Yeah. Okay, go down a bit, and then you see the corner there, corner of Ember Road, and uh, now Ember Road. The, the, the little the junction, lower, 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 lower. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that's where Mandalay Villa is. Mm, not marked here. Huh? Mm. And do you have that any memories of uh, Kampong Amber? Oh, yes, Kampong uh. Amber. Um, my, my chauffeur, my driver, has got relatives who stays in Kampong Amber. And um, in fact, one of my classmates, you know, he isn't there, a Chinese. He stays in there. And um, he tells me, very peaceful, very tranquil. The whole camaraderie of the Kampong folks there, that spirit, the Malay call it the Gotong Royong, the entire, that enlightening uh, part of their life, you know. I mean, people are always so smiling, gay. And when it comes to Hari Raya, there is that very that magnanimity, you know. You, uh, um, he receives gifts, food, Malay food, whatever. Mm. 
from Kampung Ember. Yeah, I think there's a memoir written on Kampung Ember by one of the residents some time ago. Mm, okay, worth that's checking good. out. Yeah, well, nice to read about uh, Kampung Ember. I did pass through that road, you know, or rather um, that uh, Ember, Ember Road, road? Uh -huh. into the Kampung, into the village, into the, the Kampungs, uh, together with my classmate. And it's very, uh, it's very, uh, very still and very calm, the very uh, laid back. And it's yeah. beautiful, you know, it's going back to those days, um, early days, you can imagine, because we were not born during the war, the mm. pre-war, we were not there. But you could imagine, we could visualize what it was like Singapore when population was 900,000, 800,000. And if you go back to the 1920s, you could get an idea of suburban Singapore. The yeah. Geelong side, the Teluk yeah. Blanga side, the... Um, um, the Bendemir Road side, that part of Singapore, very, very, it was, Singapore was very big in Ireland, but very small in city. Yeah. Okay, so if I can continue. Now, what is interesting about uh, that road there, the proximity to East Coast Road is parallel. You, know? you are so tempted to want to walk along there because of the beach, because of the seaside. And life in those days, I used the word laid back. It was exactly what it was. Very laid back. And when you walk along there, you don't know what is rush. You don't know what is being busy. It's a kind of a poetical escapism. And I tell you, believe you me, the sunset there, the scenery is so beautiful because of um, the... You don't see buildings there. The buildings are all void. No buildings there. And um, I think it will be in um, towards the end of the year, or rather the, the middle of the year, when the sun will be more northerly, yeah? um, I beg your pardon, more southerly, more southerly, that would be uh, towards the end of the year. So you could see the ball of fire, the sun, slowly descending into the horizon. Sadly, I don't see such phenomena on account of the numerous... It's not possible to see all of this anymore. I mean, with Unless all the to blocks Faber. of flats. Correct. Unless you go to, to Mount Faber. Yeah, but that's Patterson. the point, right? In the past, you could just walk out and see it. But now you have to go some special places to see it. Exactly. Which precisely is my father's favorite Sunday haunt, Bedok Rest House. Bedok Rest House, the other side of towards the eastern part of Singapore. And that's another landmark, you know. I, I digress. Let me digress. My father's favourite um, evening siesta from 5 o'clock, he would sit there and together with his notable friends, people like Professor um, uh, Ye, uh, Ye, uh, Ye, Ye Hwafen, Ye Hwafen, he's a very well-known uh, prominent professor on, uh, on, on, on the Malacca Chinese you will always go there and have chats together with um, uh, Lee Wei Chen, the former and first press secretary to Lee Kuan Yew. To go there and uh, marvel over the sea and then chit chatting. I don't know what they talk about because they were always speaking Mandarin. And then watching the sunset, my mother would be with me and my younger brother and sister. It's, it, it's the kind of life that we had in Singapore where we know when to work. What time, to t uh, what time to wake up, in time for working, what to do in the evening, on a weekend, Saturday afternoons, where do we go? And then Sundays, the whole day, you don't go to Orchard Road because Orchard Road was nothing then. And these were the places we go to. Then um, another thing I think I want to mention would be the, um, before Tungling School, uh, there's a huge double-story house, very old, brick and motor, very old, converted into um, kind of a, a food court in bracket inverted comma because there will be something like three or four stalls and serving afternoon meal, food, eh? I mean, they don't, they don't serve during dinner time, um, lunch hour, and they serve you at the huge garden outside, the lawn outside this building with occupied with tables and chairs, and you sit 
on this table, on this chairs and table, entertaining yourself with whatever uh, fried noodles or whatever it is, they gather together with friends. And it's a beautiful, very conducive environment. You sit down there with friends, you chit chat on the afternoon, Sunday afternoon, as you walk along the Marine Parade. If I kind of, can kind of summarize and uh, uh, put into perspective, uh, this was a uh, suburban, as you said, community of fairly middle class uh, people who were living outside of the city area, right? Uh, but all of this is going to change uh, in the 60s uh, with the HDB already doing lots of public housing within the city area, you know, places like Kampong uh, Bukit Ho Swee after the fire of 61. And But it wasn't just the city that they were looking at. It was also outside the city, in the suburban areas, the rural areas that they want to redevelop. And uh, they thought of uh, reclaiming this area in what would become known as the Great Reclamation, as the Straits Times said in 1983, which would take over a number of decades, actually, uh, and, and which would drastically transform the landscape of uh, the East. Yeah. Because it's increasing the whole value of East Coast today. Mm. And the concentration, which is, uh, you've got the business park in Changi beyond that, the expo, the expo um, and center where all the exhibitions are there, and then the big high condo in the interior, and then the HDB blocks all along from stretching right up to the door. The whole facade, the whole face of mm. East Coast has changed mm. tremendously. Do you remember uh, when your family uh, received the news that Reclamation. Did it affect your family house? It did. Mm. It did. My father bought a bungalow house in 1962 at Jalan Purindu. And already, you know, the plan for reclamation intensified from, from that period right up to 1965, 66. Uh, separation in 65. And then with separation as an independent state, there was the intensive economic um, input mm. to create jobs. Jobs was employment was a severe problem. And it started from Bedok in 1960... 66. Mm. No, Bedok. That was the trial. Ah, trial right. Era. The small project. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And the stoppage for, for some years. And then they continued gradually and then very massively, 24 hours, you know, with, with all the midnight lambs and then the conveyor belts and then they have to stop work uh, approaching the residential part of Singapore from Upper East Coast Road uh, towards the East Coast Road where all the uh, the, the houses, the Tangak size house was there, we want you, uh, the houses along we want you. And then that, that, that reclamation continued right up to 1970s, you know. How, how did your parents feel about the reclamation? Well, um, we, we couldn't do anything because the government was very, in, that, in those days, um, government was very active in economic restructuring, economic... Um, uh, yeah. Did they talk about how they felt about it? They were a bit um, uptight, a bit unhappy, of course. Lah. But there's, um, uh, the condolence or rather the consolation is that our, our value also went up because with intensive development, uh, the property there went up, increase in property mm. price, and we sold it at quite a good price. Mm -hmm. mm. When did you all leave? We left in 19, um, late 60s to, to East Coast Road, uh, sorry, to Bukit Timah, and then back to East Coast Road. So there was a, a, a short of um, lots of uh, reshuffling. Oh, okay. From when you Bulup, sorry, from Bulup, uh, I beg your pardon, from Katong to Bukit Timah, then to Julep, uh, uh, Bulup Purindu, then to East Coast Road. To East Coast Road, okay. Again, what what yeah. was that? It was the house? That's my father's property. He built a new house for himself. He built a new house, okay, okay. That's right. Taken over by my brother, my older brother. And let's say um, early seventies, right? How would the whole of the East Coast look? Do you remember drastically, that? <laughs> drastic? I couldn't even recognize the landmark. Couldn't even, could even bring, imagine the fever that 
um, it's nostalgic, of course. Lah. You can't get that sense of the people around, you know, it's so predictable, you know who you're going to meet, you know, the, the, the dialect, the, uh, the English speaking, the common people around. And it's so characteristic of that period, that, that time, you know, you, you, you're just so immersed into that whole entire that sentiment of the people around. But today, it's a total stranger. It's not, uh, it's not Katung as it used to be. The Katung of the 50s, where, where people were so uh, slow, laid back, very nice people, lots of Eurasians, you know, got a lot of Eurasian friends there. Plenty of Eurasian friends. And uh, today I tried to contact them, heard from one and from one of from one another that so and so has migrated and so and so has the, uh, what do you call just left the world you know mm. yes we age when was it that you all moved uh, to East Coast Road 70s? 67 67 yeah right. from well, HDB blocks along Marine Parade extending towards the um, where the Parkway what do you call it East Coast East Coast Highway is and then after that, you get all those uh, recreation beaches. So with the filling of all these blocks of HDB flats and people moving in, Katung area became very crowded. Mm. Crowded. Mm. Yeah. And so am I right to say that from your vantage point in East Coast Road, you could actually see the sea being pushed back in a sense? Precisely. Wow. You could see. That's quite amazing, isn't it? Very amazing. Mm. And if you lived um, in one of those uh, seaside, sea, those homes uh, along Marine Parade, in those day, in those days where people living there, the residents, they could see the sea slowly disappearing. They could see the construction of new buildings, new blocks. They could see themselves in a different world. Mm. This is it's like the thing we talked about with Chinatown, right? It's uh, destruction and construction. Yes, they, but they Chinatown. Together. Yes, but Chinatown, the old ancient building still there. It gives you the feeling of um, remembrance, right? Mm. But in this instance, Marine Parade, it's it's a different. The East Coast is a different Singapore. You are into an entirely new part of Singapore. No longer the East Coast that we know. You haven't really talked about the hills yet, you know, because the hills were leveled uh, to make the sand. It, right? There is a very, there is a very prominent hill as we drive through Bedo, Upper East Coast Road towards Bedo. I think that would be um, the Senate, the Senate Estate area. Mm. There's a colossal hillock, quite huge, you know quite huge and it's all sandy it's all clay and sand there's no vegetation then all of a sudden you know when we are when I, during those days when I was in Bukit Timah and then uh, approaching 1962 staying going back to uh, Jalampur which is the Marine Parade eastern part of Singapore passing through suddenly you know I was wondering what happened to the hill the hillock it disappeared then it transpired that um, the authority, they utilized the sand, the soil there, for the purpose of reclaiming the land of along Marine Parade, along Bedok. And then, of course, Kampung Chai Chi side, huh? mm. some more, you know, you could see the valley now, you know, more of the sand all being reclaimed for yeah. the reclamation. And, and then you also have Bedok Reservoir, right? Yes, Bedok Reservoir also, yeah. So a lot of um, soil being used, you know, to reclaim that, um, which I think was at the end of, uh, in, in the final analysis, uh, you find that it's quite economically it paid off. This is very practical, right? And then that in turn uh, projects our GNP going upwards and Singapore progress. We became very developed. Did, did your uh, family had some, with the new towns that were being built, right? Bedok later on, uh, Marine Parade. Um, 
did you all get more connected to those towns? Uh, in what sense? Going there for... Like socially, yeah, uh, socially. or makan, or shopping. Yes, okay. Yes. Uh, of course, the seafood. Rolls and rolls of seafood in those days, uh, even presently. And our extended family, aunties, cousins, second cousins, second cousins, and um, uh, uh, in the in-laws from my siblings, the in-laws, uh, they stay there. And uh, especially my mother's side, my grandmother's side, the Peranakans, they would be there. Um, my father's side, nothing. The China born side, no. But still, um, the connecting, the connection with the Straits born Chinese, they're still available in that part of the eastern part of Singapore, going to as far as um, Chai Chi, Kampung Chai Chi. Yeah? And it's dwindling because they in turn got married and their children became parents, in turn got married to with the with a new generation, with their off offspring um, into, uh, couldn't recognize them, don't even know how many. And that's the new generation today that's uh, taking the place of our generation, of um, my nephew and my nieces, because they became adults, their generation. Yeah. And, and, and everywhere I go, you see the young people in Katong, and they're so vibrant, you know, in their own world. You, know. you, could, you could sense how they missed that opportunity of knowing what Katong, East Coast, Marine Parade, the whole of that vicinity, that whole entire precinct was like, and the people, the colour, the colour, hmm. the spirit, that, um, that consciousness. Yeah, maybe yeah. I can take you out on that, Alex. Like... This is uh, Alex talking now, right? 2023, right? At the time when, in the 70s, when Katong and the East Coast was being uh, remade, uh, how did you feel about that? Were you a lot more excited about it? For purposes of food, yes. For purposes of, Always. <laughs> um, of that um, camaraderie with old people around, neighbours, nothing. Hmm. Neil, that's sad. And it's, um, you see the, the silver lining with the food and then the places to see, the shops, uh, the Taiwan Guan, which has gone. So I don't get that kind of cakes anymore. But of course, uh, there's the, uh, it's substituted with all those Delhi France funny, funny names mm -hmm. for the cakes. And then, of course, um, the old style food, you know, the, um, the laksa, there are so many variety, but all different in taste and in quality. I suppose if it was, uh, you know, uh, very sad for you in some ways, it would have been even more so for your parents and the older gen. How, how about your grandmother? Oh, my grandmother, she died in 1970-ish. Mm. Um, she would, I think, be very, very sad because mm. her ancestral family, they were all located in Ju Her auntie, her auntie, well, she was born in 1870s, was still alive in... That's my great grandmother. I mean, her aunties and her own mother, her own mother born in 1870s, was still alive in 1950s. I met her. Lived to a very old age. Hmm. And then my, my, her auntie, meaning my grand auntie, born in 1880s, still living until 1970s. They're all gone now. So they were lucky in the sense that she died at the age when Khartoum was at its heyday. Did your father say anything about it? I mean, I know that he was very upset about Chinatown. And he was a bit upset also about, um, uh, well, not really, but in a way, because we were staying in East Coast Road then, mm. and he died in his house, in our own house. Um, he really comes out because to, to him, Katong isn't a big deal. In mm. these days, uh, he would go to Taiwan Guan, mm. the cake shop. He would go to Cold Storage, Magnolia, the ice cream. He would go to have his usual, in a kopitiam, his usual beef noodle, very nice beef noodle, mm. right? Mm. And the popia along uh, Juchet. And the bakute, uh -huh, the bakute along bakute, uh, bak uh, Juchet Road. Thank you, Alex, so, for sharing. Yeah. Thank you very much, Kasi.